Hi, my name is Dr. Nitin. In this series, I shall be discussing some of the important clinical trials in cardiology. Today, I am going to tell about the DAPA-HF trial, that is dapagliflozin in patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction. It was published by Matt Murray et al. in NEJM in 2019. The study drug of this trial was dapagliflozin. Let's know more about dapagliflozin. It inhibits SGLT2 transporter proteins. SGLT2 transporter proteins are responsible for at least 90% of glucose reabsorption in the kidney. Hence, blocking this transporter mechanism causes more blood glucose to be eliminated through the urine. In clinical trials, dapagliflozin lowered HbA1c by 0.6 versus placebo when it was added to metformin. It is used to improve glycemic control in patients with type 2 diabetes. It also reduces the risk of hospitalization for heart failure among adults with type 2 diabetes and non-cardiovascular disease or other risk factors. Since dapagliflozin leads to heavy glycosuria, it can lead to rapid weight loss and tiredness. Another side effect is that the glucose acts as an osmotic diuretic. This effect is the cause of polyuria and diabetes and it can lead to dehydration. Thirdly, the increased amount of glucose in the urine can also worsen the infections already associated with diabetes, particularly urinary tract bacterial and fungal infections. Before this trial, we already knew that in patients with type 2 diabetes, inhibitors of SGLT2 transporter proteins reduce the risk of hospitalization for heart failure. But more data are needed regarding the effects of SGLT2 protein inhibitors in patients with established heart failure with a reduced ejection fraction regardless of the presence or absence of type 2 diabetes. So the goal of this trial was to evaluate dapagliflozin which is a SGLT2 inhibitor and to compare it with placebo among patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction. This was a phase 3 placebo controlled randomized trial. More than 4500 patients with NYHA class 2, 3 or 4 heart failure and a ejection fraction of 40% or less were included. They received either dapagliflozin or placebo in addition to the recommended heart failure therapy. The dose of dapagliflozin was 10 mg per day. The primary outcome was a composite of worsening heart failure event leading to hospitalization or cardiovascular death. The patients included in this trial had symptomatic heart failure, left ventricular ejection fraction less than equal to 40%, anti-pro-VNP value of more than equal to 600 picogram per ml. However, if the patient was hospitalized for heart failure within last 12 months, then the cutoff value of anti pro -VNP was taken as more than equal to 400 picogram per ml and if atrial fibrillation or flutter was present then the cutoff was more than 900 picogram per ml for the inclusion. Exclusion criteria were estimated GFR less than 30, symptomatic hypotension or systolic blood pressure less than 95. The other important point of this trial was that the patients with type 1 diabetes were not included, hence the results should not be extended to those patients. In short, it was a randomized placebo controlled trial, patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction irrespective of diabetes status were randomized to dapagliflozin 10 mg per day versus placebo. The duration of follow up was approximately 18 months. Other baseline characteristics were that mean age of the recruited patients was 66 years, females were 24% and diabetics were 42% in this trial. Coming to the results now, dapagliflozin reduced the primary outcomes significantly compared to placebo. The primary outcome of cardiovascular death, hospitalization for heart failure or urgent heart failure visit occurred in 16.3% of dapagliflozin group compared with 21.2% of the placebo group. The hazard ratio was 0.74 and the p-value was less than 0.001. 
the benefit was similar in all pre-specified subgroups including according to the diabetes status talking about the secondary outcomes the cardiovascular deaths and all cause deaths were lesser with dapagliflozin worsening of the renal function was similar between dapagliflozin and placebo again the secondary outcomes in patients with diabetes were similar to those in patients without diabetes and most importantly the frequency of adverse events related to volume depletion the renal dysfunction and hypoglycemia did not differ between treatment groups talking about some of the pre specified subgroups when results were stratified according to the age groups the benefits were consistent in all the age strata the hazard ratio was less than 1 in all four age categories as i told earlier the primary outcomes were decreased by same magnitude in both diabetics and non diabetics we can see that hazard ratio is less than 1 in both groups the benefits were more pronounced when patients were already receiving optimal doses of ace inhibitors arbs beta blockers or mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists dapagliflozin reduced both first time event as well as recurrent events with same degree of magnitude concluding the findings among patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction the risk of worsening heart failure or death from cardiovascular causes was lower among those who received dapagliflozin than among those who received placebo and it was regardless of the presence or absence of diabetes hence dapa hf trials showed that dapagliflozin was superior to placebo at preventing cardiovascular deaths and heart failure events the benefit was consistent across the age spectrum in diabetics non diabetics across the range of baseline health status and baseline medication use there was no sign of adverse safety events so finally dapagliflozin may signal a new approach in the treatment of patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction thank you for watching this video if you want to know more about such clinical trials do subscribe to this channel